There are plenty of odd bits of concrete covered in graffiti scattered around Christchurch. Most of them are leftovers from the earthquake in 2011, buildings that no one's quite got round to completely demolishing. But some graffiti-covered bits of concrete have a more global significance. The world's most famous bit of graffiti-covered concrete is the Berlin Wall, and there's a bit, or two bits, of it here in Christchurch. Our two segments of the wall are in Rauro Park, part of the East Frame, a strip of land through central Christchurch that may or may not redefine inner city living. The spot they occupy on Cashel Street is the site of an office I used to work in before the earthquakes, but that probably means more to me than you. Our wall segments were donated to the city in 2017 by the German company that dismantled the wall. It's a cool thing to have, but a gift of eight tonnes of concrete that you have to pick up from the other side of the world is a mixed blessing. After they got here, they sat in storage for two years, while the council argued about what to do with them. The original plan was to put the section of wall in Victoria Park, opposite the floral clock. The site is very close to the Christchurch Town Hall and the old law courts, two examples of brutalist architecture. Like the Berlin Wall, brutalist architecture emerged after World War II and was inflicted on a population who had already suffered enough. It was utilitarian. It was used for cheap social housing and institutional buildings like town halls and courthouses. It reflected the socialist principles popular at the time and was designed to be free of bougie nonsense like being pleasant to look at. The landscape designers for Victoria Square and a prominent local architect said that the site was completely inappropriate. Naitahu weren't happy with the location either. Victoria Square is the site of Puari Pa, a seasonal food gathering place, and earthworks would have required archaeological work. So, Rawara Park was chosen. Nobody seemed that excited about Rawara Park, but nobody seemed to object too hard either. The East Frame was part of the city that had been scraped clean after the earthquakes. So, here we are. The wall segments face east and west, reflecting the divide between east and west Berlin. From 1961, when the wall went up, until 1989, when the wall came down, the difference between the two sides was stark. The communist eastern side was protected with multiple fences, guard towers, and a hundred metre wide death strip, which provided an open field of fire to kill anyone who tried to escape. At least 140 people died while trying to escape from east to west. The Berlin Wall, like all walls, has two sides. That's kind of the point. While one side was grey and deathly, the other side was colourful and vibrant, a constantly changing canvas on which people made their mark, painted their hopes and dreams for freedom, and other stuff. The wall is no longer about division and misery. Today, both sides of the wall are colourfully painted. Freedom won. Part of the deal with the wall segments in Christchurch is that they can be constantly painted and repainted. The artwork on the wall segments when they arrived in Christchurch was not original and has been replaced. The murals are curated by Fixate Studio and Gallery and are featured work by both local and visiting artists. The artist's brief for the work take into account the fall of the Berlin Wall, the peaceful overcoming of boundaries and the hope for a better, more humane society. The first instalment was a pair of murals, the western side by Dr Suits and Jen Heads, aka Nathan and Jenna Ingram, the eastern side by Robert Sacon and Anastasia Papaleonida. These murals have since been superseded. Sacon and Papaleonida have returned to Greece, but you can still see some of their work in Lismore Street in Waltham. Dr Suits and Jen Heads can be found at Fix 8 Gallery in Sydenham. The second instalment went up at the start of 2021. The western side, painted by Meep, or Kofi Sua Hulsbach, used bright colours to capture the mood of the greatest street party in the history of the world that happened when the wall came down. The eastern side, painted by another Christchurch artist, Jesse Rawcliffe, presented a kaitiaki, a guardian figure, emerging from the darkness and towards the light, evoking growth, harmony and peace. The third instalment was by Polish artist Penner, 
Bartek Shviatecki, who visited Christchurch in July 2022. The fourth and current instalment went up in December 2022. This instalment was painted by Lucia Felicitas, a local Christchurch artist who was born in Berlin, and Nadia Valeska Devenish, who lives in Berlin, but is originally from Christchurch. The decades since the Berlin Wall came down have coincided with graffiti's increasing maturity. People have been marking their territory by defacing public services for thousands of years. According to this inscription on the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem, the Crusaders was here. The availability of aerosol paint and the rise of hip-hop culture in the 1970s and 1980s gave us graffiti as we know it. By the time the Berlin Wall came down in 1989, the western side of the wall, where aerosol paint and hip-hop were legal, was covered in layers of graffiti. Since the earthquakes, Christchurch has been blessed with a lot of empty sections with long sight lines backed by tilt slab concrete walls a target-rich environment for the young urban artist. Murals are often commissioned to discourage the, shall we say, more organic approach taken by wayward youth. The tools of chaos have been co-opted to promote order. As it's matured, the medium has documented its own evolution. Christchurch is gaining a reputation for its hundreds of pieces of street art, with artists like Jacob Yikes and Wongi Wilson helping to create the city's new post-quake identity. <laughs>